So, hi guys, Tim here doing another uh, military video, or spe well, specifically RAF video, because this video I'll be talking to, to you about uh, kind of touching on a quite a, a very dramatic big change, what really would change the fate of war, the Second World War, for quite a while, and it's what a lot of people don't really realise uh, about the Royal Air Force. Um, so in 1936, the British Army had decided to um, upscale their troops, um, upgrade a lot of armaments, get rid of a lot of armaments, units, etc. Um, just because they, you know, they think that, well, a war's going to start, why not we just have a look on the drawing board and see what we have and what we need to change and all that. So... Um, the same year, in 1936, Hugh Downing, who was the, uh, if I remember correctly, the Chief Air Marshal of the um, um, Royal Air Force at the time, he kind of, he said that why not us lot, you know, upgrade our planes and put around aerodromes in, um, pardon me, in the east of England, in, you know, East Anglia, and, pardon me, and the North Norfolk coast in that area, um, because, like I've always said, the RAF are quite the fortune tellers, because um, Hugh Downing also said that um, this war, Germany will definitely invade, which is true, Germany was planning on invading, in kind of between June and August 1944, they were planning um, their next step, or Hitler's next step in Lebensraum, living space, and that was Operation Sea Lion, or, you know, the um, invasion of Britain. So, um, what Hugh Downing did was set up uh, defensive aerodromes along the coast, um, you know, in case of an invasion, which, in 1936, that was... Um, what, four, five years later, Germany then decided to, so it's, you know, that's why I've always said Hugh Downing was a great, um, essentially a great uh, fortune teller in terms of, um, you know, what, you know, what was, what was going to go ahead, because if you think about it, during the First World War, and for many years, especially during the Great War, the Royal Navy was the, was the, uh, coastal protection and the uh, protection of the um, of Britain essentially because they would patrol the coast um, but then in the Second World War the Royal Air Force was the protection of Britain because you know more modernization and everything so in 1936 Hugh Downing says to his men members men um, to kind of rushing these new aircraft, so you had the Hurricane and the Spitfire, who were the two formidable, famous aircraft, who really, you know, they replaced the old string bag um, biplanes of the First World War, and into the 1930s. Um, so yeah, what I've drawn for you guys, oh sorry, what I've drawn for you is kind of the coast, so there's the sea, you can see the sea there. In the First World War, you would have a lot of the Royal Navy ships patrolling up and down the coast. Um, but in 1936, Hugh Downing decides to put um, air bases or aerodromes really along there because you had London as the capital being right there. And one of these was actually Biggin Hill, very famous during the Battle of Britain, Biggin Hill. Um, and so... What you had, what you had, was a five-year um, head start in terms of uh, Hugh Downing um, telling, you know, being a fortune teller in thinking that well, Germany might, Germany may possibly invade. They've had long enough to plan and think about it, so I'm going to put these aerodromes up just in case. And by the time we get to 1940, we've had. Um, uh, radio beacon beacons kind of dotted around um, everywhere 
uh, on the coast, along the coast, um, essentially showing the enemy whereabouts during the Battle of Britain, and that's the one thing which helped out radar saved our souls, saved Britain from invasion during the Battle of Britain. Um, so that's another little thing to think about. If it hadn't been of Hugh Downing's, or Hugh Downing's, um, um, mastermind kind of thinking ahead um, and thinking that Germany might invade, which they were going to, and if it wasn't for Hugh Downing, um, what's the word, if it wasn't for Hugh Downing um, for being a fortune teller, he wouldn't have upgraded the RAF and put aerodromes around for that very um, possible thing. So thanks for watching guys, have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.